Lord's give us another wonderful day today. Praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his grace. And watching over us, taking care of us, keeping us that we're able to be here. Remember Brother Steve this evening, he had to take, he called me about 4 o'clock, he had to take uh, his uh, brother-in-law to the hospital yesterday. I think they put him in the hospital yesterday. Still got him in the hospital over at Chattanooga and said be sure and put him on the prayer list and that. Remember him in prayers and pray for Steve and his wife and family. They go back and forth over there to check on him and remember them. Uh, he said be sure and, and uh, remember them in prayer this evening. So remember them and pray for those who are sick and afflicted around us, unable to be out and about this evening. Those who don't see the need to come to church, pray the Lord to get a hold of them and protect them, show them the need to be in fellowship with him. Most of all, for those that are lost and undone without him today, pray for them. We just continue to draw them to him and show them the need of salvation before it's too late. We'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer, have a word of prayer, and then we'll have a song to get started. Uh, Glory on open up prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here tonight. God, we just want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for Jesus. We want to thank you for salvation, God. We want to thank you for everything you do in our lives, God. We want to thank you for the church, God. We want to thank you for the body of the church, God. We want to thank you for everybody here tonight, God. We want to thank you for all the believers here tonight, God. And God, if there be a need here tonight, God, you go to that need and meet that need here tonight, God. God, we want to pray for that boy, God, to save him tonight, God. We just pray for him, God, to just keep on drawing back here, God. God, just touch him and draw him back here, God. We want to thank you for these kids here tonight, God. Thank you for these kids in the church, God. We ain't going to give up on the kids. We're going to keep on praying for the kids. We ain't going to give up. We're just going to buckle down, God. Send us some more kids, God. We want to thank you, God, for what you do and what you're going to do in this little church. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. 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 Expecting Justin and his family to see him. He might not know what time. He probably knows what it was. Brother Mark. Him and Robin got. His memory's like mine. He forgot how long it got out. Robin thought what time it was. She said she still knew. She did. Who did she? Don't want She wrote a 10 page letter. Did she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fight that he broke out for the church. Oh, what was she talking no. about? She paid for it right there. I let her see. They put it in the suitcase. See. <laughs> Number 113. Oh, yeah, that's a famous one. Come to the babies, you're out. You forget it. I'm sure that's Oh, yeah. Don't make you stand up and read page and page. Yeah, it'll happen, though. You get to get it. You won't do it anymore. He'll be yelling. Quick phone call said, Don't do that no more. <laughs> Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was a blood of wine. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a blood of wine. Glory to
And every Saturday evening around 4 o'clock, we'll have prayer, maybe about 3 30, have a few minutes of fellowship, and then we'll go to the Lord's Prayer. Everybody's invited, men, women, children, around folks back, come by and be with us. We did six or eight, I think, last Saturday. Uh, a good, good number, and enjoy that time, a few minutes of fellowship there. And being able, it's always a blessing to be able to uh, get together with God's people, share one of those burdens, and take them before the Lord in prayer, because we know He hears and He always answers. And I praise God for hearing and answering prayer. Amen. We see it every day. I know we take it for granted sometimes, but God if God always answers our prayers. We, we don't always acknowledge it. <coughs> always, I, I'm afraid a lot of times people talk about having good luck and all that stuff, and, and they all, there's no such thing as luck. It's a blessing from the Lord. Everything that we get is a blessing from Him. And I reckon that's everything, unless I've got something steady. We'll take a call from that quick. Even Justin asked Sunday. Savior, young in the skies. When with the 
press on or the day we found it. Oh, you got plenty of time for that, bro. Oh, yeah. I've told Roy today that this, the Psalm 20 is kind of long there, and it'd take a pretty good while to get through all of it. I guess we got a pretty good while. We'd <laughs> <laughs> have time to get through all of it. Well, if you don't get through it. Tonight, yeah, I, was, I told him I didn't know whether we'd have time to get it all or not. we will get it off. We'd have extra 15 minutes there. Anybody got a special prayer request this evening? I always did your prayers. Remember me and my family prayed for all of my family, Mr. Gary at home, remember Chris over in South Carolina. And by the way, Chris's wife, they did, he did, she did have another doctor's appointment and they went back and told her that he told her, they told her that they didn't see any signs of her having cancer, but it was just her whole esophagus and everything was real raw and uh, where she she takes on been taking them on the <coughs> powders and they told her that them things is, if she kept doing that, them things was gonna kill her. So, uh, but she didn't have any signs of, so far they haven't found any signs of cancer or anything like that so it's not something that can't be taken care of if they'll just if she'll just let them take care of it and do it so that's a that's an answer prayer God for watching over her even though she's in this condition that she's in and, and also pray for her spiritual condition is more important than her health actually remember that uh, pray for Kadena remember Greg and, and Caitlin and Jonathan across the street and boys, good to have them here with us this evening. I'm yeah. glad to see them this evening. So I continue to remember them in our prayers. And like I said, don't forget to pray for Brother Steve and his brother-in-law. Remember them. I, his brother-in-law has some kind of infection, and they can't find out what it is. And they put him in the hospital to try and see if they can figure out where it was coming from. So uh, remember him and pray for Brother Steve and his family. He said be sure to remember them and his girls and his wife and girls and children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. Anybody else have a special request? You still remember Blake? Everybody knows, you know, yeah. Lord Savior. Yes, amen. amen. Uh, you have to ask Danny what they're going to do with that letter. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not. No, they, they didn't do it. They didn't do that when they were out there. Blake, you never speak to me again. She jumped back a little bit in the letter, so you know he's going to be so mad. <laughs> oh, really? They probably won't do that. They, they, they didn't do that with anybody like that. But they didn't tell them they was going to. <laughs> they wouldn't tell them that. They wouldn't mind how embarrassing it would be. Well, it would be more embarrassing than Pray for them. Remember that family. Uh, Roy and Rhonda invited them to come to go to church with us some, and, and they hadn't they hadn't come yet. But remember them. Pray for them. Lord, just continue to direct them to where He'd have them to go. He wants them to be here. That's where we want them to be. Right. Want to be where He wants them to be. Pray for them. Remember My them. brother went in, and he had two friends that they were supposed to do. It. They told them that the recruiters come around to the high school. And they told them they would put them together. He said. They were not. No, they didn't have to. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they went together. They, uh, when I went in the service, they told us if you had somebody that you wanted, that, uh, somebody wanted to go at the same time, you know, you, they keep, they all, you'll stay together all yeah. the way through. Yeah. They don't have yeah. Whenever they leave that, when you leave that uh, induction center, one goes one way and one goes the other goes the other way. You don't ever see them again, probably. That's the way that is. But anyway, remember them, pray for Blake and, and uh, all those young men that's starting out down there in the service and their families. Remember all of them. Uh, my family, my mother, my mother, my sister, and I want to thank the Lord for all the traveling grace he's given me. Amen. Them, going over there, taking care of everything. I really, I really do appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, remember Woody and 
his family, pray for his mom, his brother, and Carolyn. Remember them. Uh, pray for Carolyn's health. She mm -hmm. has a lot of health issues. Remember her. She's having some surgery on her eyes. Pray for that. The Lord will just bless her and give her healing and uh, be with the doctors as they do that to guide their hands and help them do what they do. <coughs> Matt, so remember us. Yes. Got to remember Mark and Betty. The family pray for all of them. The Lord just continue to give them help and strength and hold them up and keep them going. Because we need them. So pray the Lord to bless that. Okay. Remember Bats. Rebecca. She's still real bad. Family. She's in a congestive heart failure and her kidneys are shutting down. Believe. She's still in the she's, she's still in the hospital. Where's she at? Park Ridge East. Park Ridge. I mean no, no, it's the Park Ridge over there at East Ridge, you way over in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, remember Rebecca, pray for her. She's having a lot of health problems, seizures, and she had had seizures and some stuff, and it's caused her some other issues, and, and she's not doing well at all, so remember her. I, I remember you, you told me that, and I forgot it. Remember, remember Rebecca, and pray for Jessica also, if the Lord get a hold of her and get her in church and get her straightened up. Okay, remember that. Both them girls will raise, raise these girls. Okay, anybody else? Okay, remember Danny and his family, pray for Shirley and boys, remember them. Remember uh, Jacob and Dakota and Lucas, pray for them. Remember uh, Danny's mom and dad, pray the Lord give them help and strength and keep them up and going. Pray for him as he goes to see about them, the Lord give him traveling grace. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bats. Remember Brother Ed back there with his arm and he's got a broke wing back there and he's got his arm bone. Salem, you gotta go back to Salem, okay? Remember him, pray for him, the Lord just give him healing, health, and strength, and keep him going. Remember that, okay? Anybody else? That's been a bit of brother, that's wrong. Yes, Johnny, remember him? Johnny's got it. Pray for him to get to church, but he's got a cast on his foot, his foot, had surgery on his foot. Pray for that, the Lord just heal his foot.
pray God tonight that you just uh, bless each one that come this way and each family and each home that's represented. Lord, bless them in a special way. We pray for Brother Marty and his family. Ask your blessings on them. Uh, this Wanda and Carlos, pray God that you just continue to deal with them. Show them that they need to be in church. Father, that you just draw them a little closer to you, Father. Bless them. We pray for <coughs> Jane and Christy and their family. Ask your blessings on them tonight, God. I pray you uh, continue to bless them, strengthen them, hold them up, lead them, guide them away to heaven. Uh, we pray for Johnny as he goes to the doctor tomorrow. We ask your blessings on him. Lord, we pray you bless his, uh, bless him and, and be with the doctors as they do that surgery. We pray God you just give them the wisdom, knowledge to do what they need to do. We pray for Woody and uh, Carolyn and Carol and Ruth, we ask your blessings on them tonight. God, uh, some need to be in church. And some need to be in fellowship with you. God, we pray you convict their hearts and show them the need to draw them close to you. Pray for all you just continue to give him traveling grace and watch over him. Lord, we pray for Danny and his family. We ask your blessings on them tonight. God, I pray you continue to bless them and strengthen them and meet their needs. Watch over them when travel. Go see about them. Bless that. I pray God you just bless them in a special way. Meet Brother Red. Ask your blessings on him. I pray God you give him healing in his arm, there, in his legs. I pray God you just give him health and strength and hold him up and strengthen him. Oh, we pray for this church. It's your church. God, we pray you bless it in a special way. We pray you use this church to be a light on the hill here in this community. Father, we pray for that young man. Uh, come, got saved Sunday. We thank you for that soul, and we pray God yes. you just continue to bless him and continue to lead him and guide him in the way that he ought to go. And Father, we pray you to help him to see the need to continue to serve you and to live for you. And we know he belongs to you. God, I pray you just hold him close to you and, and uh, give him strength and guidance and lead him in the way that he ought to go. And God, we just praise you and thank you for that. We pray for his the rest of his family, Lord, that they. Uh, get in the house of God, get under the word of God, and uh, might get saved if they're lost. Uh, pray God we just continue to draw them to you. Lord, we ask you now to go with us now. We're going to be the rest of this night tonight. We pray for blessing. We look into your word tonight. God help us to rightly divide your word and get that promise we need all. God, we'll give you the praise and the glory for all the things that you've done and all you're going to do. Thank you for the very privilege of prayer. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. All that you do for us on a daily basis, Father, and for those things that you're going to do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. In Psalm number 20, it's only about 13 verses there. We read those verses and go back a little bit and look at some of them. Psalm number 20 starts off there in verse 1. It says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withholded the request of his lips. Selah. For thou preventest him with the blessing of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Yes, Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him, for thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with, with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and That's through right. the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischief a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back 
when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so we will sing and praise thy power. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for the day and the blessings of the day. Another opportunity to gather together around your word this evening. We pray, God, that you'll just fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we get that from your word that you want us to have. God, I pray you'd give us the Holy Spirit of God to hold us up and to speak through us. And we'll praise you and thank you, Lord, thank you. for it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. As I was reading that, I was thinking about it. He said there, the king shall joy in thy strength. And I thought about David, what a mighty king David was. You know, uh, he had he was, he had everything that he wanted That's right. right there in his presence. Yet even though he had all those things, and even though he had all that power that he had, he gave God credit That's for right. every bit of it. You know what? I'm afraid a lot of times today we fail to give God credit for the things that he gives us and the things that we have and the blessings that we have. Right. But David was quick to give God credit for, what he, uh, for the power that he had. You know, David could have uh, waved his hand and had a man's head cut off. Or David could have, mowed. he was only, uh, he was, the people were only allowed to speak to him when he held out his scepter to them. You know what? He had to hold out his scepter to the, to, to the person that came into the court before they could even go to speak to him. All he had to do was just wave his hand and, and they were done for. They'd be done away with. They'd be carried out, taken away. He had all that power. He had everything that he wanted. I guarantee that, the, uh, that he had no desire for anything, Brother Marty, that was out there. If he's some kind of special food he wanted, he had it. Some kind of special blessing he wanted, he had it because all he had to do was tell somebody to get it for him and they'd either get it for him or they'd die. But even though he had all that power, even though he was in that place where he was at, I thought a whole lot about that. I thought about what a, what a mighty position that he was in. And he was yet he was in that position. He was still quick right. to give God credit for the blessings that he had. You know what? Sometimes even down here on this uh, low place that we are, we forget to give God credit for the things that he does for us time and time again. You know what? I believe time and time again he heals our bodies time and time again. He heals our troubles time and time again. He meets the needs that we have from day to day and we'll, we'll take it for granted and just go on like it, uh, like it was good luck. You know what? Praise God. We ought to be giving God credit for what He does. We ought to be like David. We ought to be quick to praise Him. We ought to be quick to lift up His name. We ought to be quick to tell people what He's done for us. I'm going to tell you, uh, somebody in his position was that humble and that grateful to God, that ought to be a lesson for us to be right. where we're at, to be as yeah, humble right. a heart as he had and be as thankful to the Lord for what he does for us every day. It says, said, the king shall joy in thy strength. I'm going to tell you, we ought to be rejoicing in the power of God in our lives every day. That's right. Because it's the power That's of right. God Amen. in our life that keeps us going from day to day. It's the power of God in our life that leads us and guides us and keeps us on the path to, that we ought to be walking, Brother Roy. Uh, Apostle Paul said uh, that we ought to be, we'll be walking circumspectly. You know what? It's the power of God Amen. that keeps right. us walking circumspectly. We do the best we can from day to day to live from day to day to be a witness for yeah. the Lord. And it's the power of God that holds us up and keeps us going the way that we ought to go. We ought to rejoice in the strength that God gives us from day to day to get through the world. You know what? We're not any match for the devil. We're not any match for the for the uh, uh, temptations that he puts out there in the world today. Without the power of God working in you, you succumb to those temptations in spite of all that you can do. No matter how hard you try, Brother Billy, without the power of God working in you, praise God, you're going to fail uh, from time to time. And I'm going to tell you, that's right, and I'm going to tell you what else. If you didn't have the power of God working in you, you'd fail a lot more times than what we do already. Amen. We have the power hey. of God, the Holy Spirit of God living in us to give us the power of God to live the kind of life that we ought to live. He 
It goes on down through there. It says, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. I want to tell you, we've got plenty to rejoice in. Right. I want you to know tonight, praise God, it don't matter how bad this world gets. And it don't matter how yeah, bad this life right. seems to be. It don't matter how much trouble we endure. We've still got a lot to rejoice in. I'm going to tell you, eternal life is enough to cause me to rejoice when the world's yeah, falling right. down around me. If, if you take everything that the person of God... The man of God, if you take everything that he has in this world and do away with it, he's still got a lot to rejoice about. I want to tell you, praise God, we don't even know how great glory is going to be. Right. It's above what our finite right. man right. can imagine. Over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, two verse right. 9, and I forgot where it was at. I'm glad you remembered it. The eye hath not seen nor ear heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. You know what? We can't even know what heaven's going to be like. But I want to tell you one thing. We know enough about it that we ought to be rejoicing in the fact that we're going to spend eternity there. I know enough about hell that I can rejoice in knowing that I don't have to go to that awful place. I can rejoice in knowing that I have God's salvation in my life, I'm glad to know, praise God, He loved me so much that He gave His only begotten Son on the cross of Calvary. That, praise God, I don't have to spend eternity in that devil's hell. I ought to be rejoicing That's right. in the fact that I'm going to spend eternity with the one who loved me so much that He was willing to die for me. He said there, Thou hast given Him his heart, heart's desire and how has not withholding the request of his lips. I'm going to tell you time and time again God's answered our prayers. Time and time again he's given us the request of our lips. Time and time again he's blessed us with those things and you know what that's not even all of it. We don't have any idea how many times God blesses us and we don't even know anything about it. We don't have to know how many times that we might have got out here in the car and started down the road and you know what? We could have gotten killed or gotten run over or anything could have happened but God had his hand on us and he was taking care of us. We don't know how many times, Marvin, we could have had a car fall on us. We don't know how many times we could have had something happen that would have taken us out of this whole world. But you know what? God saw fit to keep us around. We don't know how many times He's done that without our even knowing anything about it. We don't know how many times we've had some kind of illness right. that would have taken us out yeah, of here. But God saw fit to reach down well, and touch us and heal yeah, us. God right. saw fit to keep us around, praise yeah, God. Man. We don't know how many times I say that. But I know it happens. And I know it's still happening today. Yeah. And I know God's still in the miracle working business today just like he was in Elijah's day and just like he was in Moses' day. He's the same God today, the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's not ever going to change, praise God. I'm glad we serve that kind of God that he loves us that way. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has withholding and has not withholding the request of his lips. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Uh -huh. And that preventest don't mean keeping it from. That means going ahead. That's a different than the way we use. When we use that word prevent, it means to keep something from happening. Right. Or to keep something away. Well, that's not what it means there. I was really shocked when I read that. And I thought, well, that don't sound right. That sounds like that's uh, doing something else. But after I got to look at it, and some of the commentaries and got to looking at some of the uh, definitions and, and the strong concordance and so forth, that word prevent us there means to be going ahead of. God's going ahead of us. Listen, listen to what it says. Keep that in mind and listen to what he says. He says, for, for thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. That means God's going ahead of us with the blessings of goodness. He's there. 
all the time when we need him. He's there all the time. When trouble comes along, he's there all the time. When tribulation pops up, you know what? The God of glory, he's right there yeah, before us, right. waiting for us to call on him, waiting for us to lean on him, waiting for us to put our faith and our trust in him. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Well, that's what he's talking about there in that verse. David said that, uh, that has not prevented me with all the good blessings, all the good things. He's right there, yeah, praise right. God, with good things. When trials come, when troubles come, when it gets to be hard, He's right there with a blessing to pour yeah, out right. on me. Right. Praise God, He's waiting to bless us. I believe He's waiting to bless us all the time. And only we, <coughs> and only we prevent Him from that blessing from day to day. He's always there waiting to bless us. And then He goes on to say, Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Of course, David's talking about <coughs> David's talking about his, him, himself there. Talking about having a crown of gold. But it, I thought, it, you know, it applies to the Lord Jesus Christ. God Almighty set a crown of gold on the Lord Jesus Christ. God Almighty resurrected him and seated him at the right hand of God the Father. I thought, you know what? He has a crown of glory. He's co-existent with God the Father. What a blessing. Can't you imagine what a blessing it is for God the Son to be co-existent with God the Father and with the Holy Ghost of God. Praise God. What a blessing it is. He's co-existent. A crown of glory co-existent with God the Father. He has a crown of glory as a mediator. He has a crown of glory as a mediator seated at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for you and I. I'm glad to know, praise God, today he's sitting at the right hand of God and I'm glad to know, praise God, when the devil says, look down there at him. Look what a mess he's made out of his life. Look down there at him. Look how he's messed up. Well, I'm glad to know Jesus Christ is right there making Amen. intercession for me. Oh, praise God, I'm glad to know that he's there. Amen. So, so, so look, Father, he belongs to me. Praise God. God. And all he sees is the blood of that's Jesus right. Christ. That's, that's it. All he sees is the blood. Oh, I'm glad to know he's had the crown of glory as a mediator with res in respect to power and authority and glory. He's right there, seated at the right hand Amen. of God the Father. Mediator for you and I. And then he has a crown of, of glory as being manifested Savior of the world. You know what? Praise God. That's quite a crown That's to right. be made. The Savior of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one and only Savior of the whole world. No other way for us to get to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. No other way for us to have eternal life and glory except through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Jeez. Christ. I'm telling you, that's a crown of glory to me. Crown the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way. Amen. Acts chapter 4, y'all heard me say it a dozen times. I know Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is our salvation in any other for there's none other name. None other name Amen. given under heaven. I want to tell you, that's a crown of glory right there in itself to be put in the position of the Savior of the world. Can you imagine what a blessing that is? God the Father said, Son, you can save them, all of them. They're all doomed to the devil's hell. Amen, but right. you can save them all. All of them. Woo. Not God's will that any should perish. All should that all perish. should come to repentance. I'm glad to know Jesus Christ had the crown of being manifest, the Savior of the world, and he had the crown of the glory and the worship of the saints and the angels. You know what? Praise God. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's Amen. worthy to be praised. He has yeah. the worship of the saints and angels. You know what? There's not a child of God in the world that don't know Jesus Christ enough to worship Him, that don't know Jesus Christ enough to lift up praises to Him. Because if they, if they fail to do that, then they're not children of God. If they're a child of God, praise God. They're a child of God. They're going to lift up praises to him. And they're going to worship him. And they're going to hold him up in high esteem. A crown of glory, praise God. He is a crown 
of glory in himself. He says, for thou permittest him with the blessings of goodness, thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him. What about that? Praise God, isn't that a blessing? There he was, crucified. There he was, murdered, put in a, in a borrowed tomb. There he was. It's finished. It's over. Dead and gone. That's right. No. Uh-uh. Three days later. Praise God. He's mine. I'm glad to know God gave him eternal life. That's Praise right. God. He raised him out of that tomb and took him home to be seated at the right hand of God the Father. That's a, what a blessing. Woo, I read that. I thought, man, what a blessing that is. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him. Even length of days forever and ever. Eternal life. That's right. That's you know what? what? Like he, gave it, he gave it to Jesus Christ. Eternal life. He gave him eternal life. He asked it, and God gave it. You know what he says? He goes on to say there. Praise God. That, he, he says that we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So if he's, if he's there for eternal life, guess what? Praise God. We have that same benefit. We have that same benefit. One day, we'll be seated around the throne of God just like Jesus Christ is there today. Amen. We'll be seated around the throne of God one day. Praise God. That's eternal life. And it's going to be forever. And ever and ever and ever, and there's no end. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. His glory is great in thy salvation. The Bible's back there, another the verse that says, uh, and gave him his heart's desire. I thought about what he's over in Matthew. I can't remember where it's at. Over in Matthew, it said, where he said, uh, If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But nonetheless, thy will be done. You know what? It was, it was his heart's desire to do the will of God in everything that he done. You know what we ought to be? We ought to have our, our, it ought to be our heart's desire to serve God, to live for Him in everything that we do. It ought to be our heart's desire to be the witness that we ought to be. It ought to be our heart's desire to serve God the way we ought to serve Him. It ought to be our heart's desire to live under the shadow of the cross, praise God. It ought to be our heart's desire to be there all the time. Praise God, I'm going to tell you, sometimes this whole world gets us to wandering around. This whole world gets us, pulls us down, and it causes us a lot of trouble. But you know what? As long as we stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can put those things behind us because we have that power that he talked about. We have the power of God right here within us to Amen. lead us and to guide us and to help us to go the way that we ought to go. Amen. It ought to be our heart's desire That's right. to serve him and to live for him. It ought to be our heart's desire to live for him every day. He said, his glory is great in thy salvation. Salvation belongs to God. It don't belong to us. No. Salvation belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Salvation belongs to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He just lets us have it. Praise God. I'm glad. He, I, I know we get it confused sometimes. We say people accept him. But you know what, praise God, people don't accept him. He accepts them into the family of God. We're adopted into his family. It ain't that we adopt him. We wasn't looking for him. We wasn't hunting for him. I don't know about anybody else. I wasn't seeking God when I got saved. Praise God, he was seeking me. And I'm glad, praise God, that he did. It's, he says, uh, it's his salvation. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Most blessed forever. Mm -hmm. That ought to be enough to shout about right there. Most blessed forever. Hey. 
Don't, we're most blessed forever when we come into the family of God and become an heir and join heir with Jesus Christ. We're most blessed forever. This world might have caused us a lot of trouble. The devil might cause us a lot of trouble. But we're most blessed forevermore, praise God, when we become children of God. Heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Most blessed right. forever. Blessed with eternal life. Blessed with the power of God to live from day to day. Blessed with the power of God to overcome the temptations and the trials that this world puts before us. Blessed, blessed, most blessed by Jesus Christ. I'm glad no one blessed, praise God. It says, for the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. I want to tell you something. What I thought about when I read that, I thought, yeah, you know what? The child of God that's firmly planted in the Word of God, that's in fellowship with God, the child of God that's doing, serving God and living for Him, he's firmly planted. That's right. Praise God, the devil's not going to be able to do anything with him. He might cause him trouble. He might cause him to stump his toe. He might cause him to stumble. But you know what? Praise God. He's not, he can't do anything with him because God the Father has got his hand on him and he keeps him up, holds Amen. him up. How blessed are we that we have the, the Lord Jesus Christ in our life every day. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord through the mercy of of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Now what? We're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. If he shall not be moved, guess what? We shall not be moved. That's right. We shall not be. We're like a tree planted by the water. Does that song say something about a tree that's planted by the waters? Praise God, we're like a tree that's planted by the waters. We've got a firm foundation and a good, strong root and growing yeah. every day. That's what that tree's doing. It's got a strong root. Amen. And it's fed every day. And it's growing every day. And that's where we ought to be. We ought to be growing in the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. We ought to be growing closer to Him. He said, he goes on to say there in verse 8, says, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. I want to tell you, God knows exactly what's going on in the world today. You know what? We get to looking around and, and seeing everything all messed up and seeing what's going on in the, in the White House and seeing what's going on around over other parts of the world. We get to looking out there at that and we get discouraged and we get to thinking that uh, God's just forgotten about us. But I'm going to tell you something. God's got his hand on the throttle all the time. He's the, still the engineer, praise God. He's still running the thing, and it's going to be however he says it's going to be. He's still got his hand on the control. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Those that are out there in the world today that will mock the Christians. Those that are out there in the world today that say we're crazy because we come in here and holler and spit and, right. and go on. You know what? Praise crazy. God. God knows every yeah. one of them. That's he right. knows every single one of them. Thank those you, that man. we visit, Brother Roy, and they tell us, get out of here. I ain't got time to talk to you. I don't want to hear that. But you know what? God knows every single one of them. He knows their names, praise God. He knows their address, praise God. He knows where they're at. And every one of them is going to bow before him. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess right. Jesus Christ, Lord of all. Praise God, King of kings. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thy name. Mm. Guess what's going to happen? That's where, that's where that old devil is going to go. That's where them... That's where them Pharisees and them Sadducees and, and them guys that crucified him on the cross, that's where they're going to go. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and fire shall devour them. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something. If that didn't make you afraid of hell, you know, <laughs> if you wasn't already afraid of hell, that ought to make you afraid of hell. <laughs> If you wasn't already afraid of hell, that ought to make you afraid of hell. I'm telling you, that ought to open. If you're lost and undone without Jesus Christ, that ought to be enough to open your eyes right there to know. He says, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. 
third fruit. And then listen to this. I, when I read this, I thought, you know what? Uh, back over there somewhere, he said, he said uh, his wrath will be poured out on the uh, to, to the second and third generation, I believe it is. I thought about that when I read this. It says, Thou shalt make uh, where we get the fruit shall their, their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth. Those he's talking about those still that hate God. I'm gonna tell you, you think what you do don't affect anything but you, you uh -huh. bad wrong. What you do can affect you and your family and even your kids and your grandkids. Listen, that's what he said, their fruit. That's their offspring. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth. And their seed from the among the children of men. You know what he done? He did, there's not any more Amalekites. There's not any more uh, Hittites. There's not any more. You know why? Because he destroyed their fruit from off the, world, off the earth. Oh. They're gone. They're no longer around. And that's what he's saying here. If those that hate God and those that are against God and those that want to tell us what fools we are and want to tell us how we're weak and we're leaning on religion and all that old crazy stuff that you hear, listen, that's what's going to happen to them. Their fruit is going to be done away with mm -hmm. from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to carry out. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church, praise God. No matter how bad the world gets, Brother Marty, no matter how many ideas they come up with to do away with the church, the coronavirus and, and the, uh, what's that other thing? The, monkey pox. Yeah, monkey pox. They, they're not going to do away with the church, I'm telling you. The church is still going to be here. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That's what he's saying. He said their uh, 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 mischievous That's devices right. will fail. They're not going to work. We're still going to be around. Mm -hmm. We're still going to be here. We're still kept here for a purpose, and that's to tell the world mm -hmm. about Jesus Christ. Just got one more verse, and I'll hush. They, <laughs> for they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform, Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings. Listen to this now. Make their arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So we will sing and praise thy Amen. power. But listen, in verse 12 there, he says, listen, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows. Look back over in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, and I don't know what verse it is, but I'll find it right quick. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, starting in verse 39, listen to what he says. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If, verse 41, if I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance on mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. That's what he said there in that, in that same thing there in that verse. Therefore shalt thou make them Turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon their, on thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted. That ain't the one I was hunting for. There's one that talks about his arrows. 42. Okay, verse 42. Yeah, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. There it is. That's the one I thought about. That when I read that uh, Psalm 12 there, I thought what he said there in Deuteronomy. He said, I'll make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and the captives from the beginning of revenge upon the enemy. I'm glad to know, praise God, that I'm not an enemy of the cross tonight. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> by the grace of God, we live for him and serve him by the grace of God. He holds us up and keeps us going. And we didn't get all 12 verses that I've done. Stand with me this past. I really enjoyed looking at that getting that this week. It's been a blessing. I've enjoyed it all week. I've been, I've been feeding on that this week. That's good stuff.